All right, real quick before we get into this. Uh, Wednesday, July 16th, UFC Fight Night on Fox Sports 1 at the Revel Resort in uh, Atlantic City, New Jersey. Tickets go on sale May 30th. And then Saturday, August 23rd, UFC Fight Night on Fox Sports 1 uh, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I don't know when tickets go on sale for that. So tonight's gate is the second highest uh, in Amway history. First place is the Eagles. Uh, the Eagles beat us by $30,000. That's a stinger right there. I will stop talking shit about Florida now. Um, <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, the attendance tonight was 17000 The gate was $1.65 million. The biggest Fox uh, gate ever. So, fight of the night, uh, Alves and Bazinski. Those guys won $50,000. <laughs> and the performance bonuses went to Cerrone and... Uh, Alex White. So congrats, you guys. Yep. More fun money for Cerrone. <laughs> Who's got the first question? We'll start out with uh, Tiago, please. Obviously, congratulations. I know this was a, an emotional night, you know, being out for so long. Can you kind of tell us how you're feeling and, and how good it felt to be back in there? Uh, I feel pretty good. Uh, it was definitely, uh, you know, a special experience, you know, fighting back here, especially in Orlando. But uh, I feel pretty good. Everything worked out great. Obviously a tough fight for you tonight, but I mean, what do you see for yourself? You lost a lot of time. Are you wanting to get back and, and, and get real active as quickly as possible, or do you need a little time to heal up after a war? Uh, no, I think, uh, you know, I'm, I'm shooting for two more fights this year at least, you know, so I'll be back for training in a week. If I could for Cowboy as well. Cowboy, obviously a, a tough start for you tonight. You know, what was going through your head as it was unfolding? Because it looked like he kind of had a, a little bit of speed advantage on you early on. Yeah, I don't know what was going on in my mind, but then the two golden words, fuck it, came in, and I, uh, <laughs> and I just had to turn it on, so it was good. And obviously, I know you've said you want to fight like six times. I mean, there's the, the June show, I believe, in Albuquerque. Is that one scream out to you? or Any any fight. I'm, I'm ready for Baltimore next weekend, if that's a possibility. <laughs> so uh, really, as, as many fights as I can, I just need someone. I hear guys talking about they don't get paid enough. If you want to just sign on the dotted line, I'll help you. I'll be your Huckleberry, so we'll be ready to go. Dana, 17,000. Did, did you see enough from Orlando to want to wanna come back sooner rather than later? I'll come back next weekend. <laughs> I'm, I'm in. I'm sold. And, and is that <clears throat> It's a great town, too. I had fun here the, this, uh, the, the couple days that I was here. So, you know, I got to thank Shaq, too. Shaq's been terrorizing me for years to come here. He, uh, he's, he's, he's said it. He told me a couple years ago, go to Orlando. Orlando's where it's going to be, and he was right. Do, do you know off the top of your head if that 17,000 is a record for a non-pay-per-view? Um, like that, I don't know. You mean as far as attendance, how many yeah, people? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, don't, I don't know. It might be. Well, d uh, did you see anything from uh, Kaib? He's obviously undefeated. He's 6-0 in the UFC. Do you see anything from him that, that can warrant a number one contender or a title shot anytime soon? I don't know. I, I don't like making those decisions the night of the fight, but uh, yeah, he's impressive, and he looks good, and He's, he's, get, he's working his way there, for sure. Uh, hi, Dana. To your left. Hey. What did you think about Fabricio's performance? I mean, he looked impressive, but what did you personally think? Travis Brown? Yeah. No, no Fabricio. Oh, Fabricio? I, I mean, he picked him apart. He picked him apart. He fought a safe fight to guarantee that he was going to get I, th I think he could have finished Travis. You know, but Travis is a tough guy. Um, you know, my, my question was, how did Travis gas out in the you know, two and a half minutes into the first round, and they think they think he has a broken rib. They think he broke his rib in the first round. That would explain it. And obviously, he definitely has a broken hand. And obviously, a great night for the Mexico City event. Now, Berdom is getting to headline, <laughs> and he also is. I mean, he is your analyst for the UFC Network in, right. in Latin America. He's a very public face of the company in Latin America. I mean, it couldn't have worked better for you guys, right? Yeah. I mean, it, listen. However, it works out. It works. It, it is what it is. I, I don't ever. I don't ever think like, I stopped thinking like that years ago. So whatever would have happened tonight happened and we would have rolled with it. And but yeah, it, it doesn't suck that he is the face and, and speaks Spanish and all that stuff. It doesn't suck. And can we talk about maybe Kane and Berdum being the coaches of the Ultimate Fighter Latin America? Anything is possible. Thanks. Dana, on the main event, you know, when you were talking about Verdum's performance, you, you kind of mentioned that Brown gassed out and you said that, you know, Verdum could have finished the fight. So as a whole, 
Was it a, a, a performance that made you say, you know, yeah, I really want to see him fight Kane, or, or what, were you like slightly disappointed? You know, I, I think that, uh, you know, I think that he could have finished the fight. I think he could have. I think he played it safe. Um, he knew he was winning. Um, so it, it, it leaves questions. I mean, wh how much more could he go? How much more could he give? You know what Kane's going to do. Kane's 100 miles an hour. He comes forward. Um, he does damage and never stops damaging you until he finishes you. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how it goes. And then just one for you, Misha. You, you kind of had a slow start, which you're not known for. Typically, you're known for really fast starts. Mm -hmm. And um, I was wondering, you had kind of spoke about wanting to change your style a little bit and maybe not just run forward in, in, in the, into your opponents. Is, was that played into that, or was it just a slow start? I don't know, man. I was just trying not to be a psycho in the fight and <laughs> be a little bit more, like a little bit more calculated. But um, I don't know. I think, you know, I was, I was uh, struggling with a mental hurdle. Just losing two in a row was really rough. And... Um, you know, starting to think like, am I cursed? Am I just, you know, going through all those like weird questions. And, um, you know, I, I started off slow. Just there's a fine line for me between thinking and going. And when I go, that that's what happens in the third round. When I'm thinking, that's what happens in the first round. And it just, it took me a minute to like be like, hey, you know what? I got to go. And uh, I'm definitely capable of a better. Anyone who's ever seen me fight, you know, can say, yeah, it's not typical for me to start slow. But I did this fight, but I'm over the hurdle now. You know what I mean? I, I won the fight. And um, I'm happy, you know, I got my first UFC victory, and I think that's going to that's gonna motivate me more. Uh, question for Dana. I know you don't matchmake right after these things. We talk about this all the time. But, but you're going to ask time me anyway, a, right? Time being of the essence on this particular thing, with Bobby Green having gone out of his fight next week in Baltimore, we got a volunteer here. Would you even consider that, putting him no. in a fight that, that quickly? Listen, I love this kid. He's nutty as hell. Um, Six fights in a year. Listen, if, if this kid could fight 16 times in a year, I'd love to have him on every card. He is a show starter. He always you, – well, you're guaranteed Cerrone's going get, to get the, get the show started. Um, but uh, I, I don't even know if that's ever been done. I mean, guys have fought five times in a year. Um, you know, I, I would love to put him on every card. Let's, let's see what happens and let's see how healthy he is and if he can really turn around. You had Lieben within two weeks of one or another one, so. Yeah, no, it's true. I, 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 I hear you. Thank you for Dana. What do you expect from Verdun versus Cain, and what do you expect from Mexican people in Mexico City? From uh, I, I expect that to be a great fight. I'm excited for Cain to come back. Cain's fights are always exciting and fun. He, he's a different type of heavyweight. He he, he goes uh, at a speed that other heavyweights can't go. He he can go five rounds and and he never stops. He does constant damage, and he just keeps going until he finishes you. Um, and I, I'm ex I'm very excited about Mexico. You know. Um, all the people from Televisa were here tonight, and, and they're excited about it. We're excited about it. Latin America and, and Mexico are a, uh, uh, a part of the world that I've been dying to get to, and now we're finally, it's all coming together, and we're finally doing it, and I'm, I'm very excited about it. Thank you. I have a question for Cowboy. Uh, obviously, after your fight, the crowd seemed to be the loudest I've heard it in, in my two years of covering sports here. Do you think there's something about the Central Florida fans that they just attract to you? Do you think it could be your, your the NASCAR, the Budweiser sponsorship? Do you think there's something that attracts them? I, I hope so. I, I really do. Uh, it was awesome to, to walk out and hear the place erupt. You know, that gives you a lot of momentum going into a fight and into my next fight. So hopefully uh, the UFC is like, yeah, let's get Cowboy on a very soon card. <laughs> would you like to see it be a back on a car to here in Orlando again oh yeah Orlando was awesome man I love Orlando I got my man Rusty living down here and uh, wakeboard every day so I love Orlando <laughs> wakeboarding doing flips off Shaq's pool day before the fight oh yeah thanks Shaq yeah. for that <laughs> yep uh, Dana, I yep. wanted to get your thoughts on the fight between Misha and Liz. Who did you think won that fight? I thought uh, Liz won rounds one and two, and I thought Misha won the third round. But it's one of those things where if you look at the second round, Liz didn't really do any damage. She took her down. She held her. If you give, uh, if you give Misha points for submission attempts, it's not crazy to say that, that Misha won the fight either. You know? And if, if you, uh, you want to guarantee yourself a victory, take, take the judges out of it. Finish fights, you know what I mean? It's I tell I say time. 
You know, I mean, does anybody here? I'm sure other people thought Liz won the fight too. But if you look at what Liz did in the fight, just laid on her and didn't do any damage, it's not crazy to say that that you could have gave it the second round to Misha. And Misha, what were what was going through your mind immediately after the fight? Did you feel confident you won it, or did you think it was up in the air? No, I wasn't confident I won it. To be perfectly honest, I really thought that. Like, I was like, man, I honestly actually thought that Liz probably won the fight because um, she had more riding time, but I haven't watched the fight. Um, that's just what was going through my my mind. I knew she round one, won round one, and in round two, like I said, she kind of just held me there for a while. And um, from what I heard from other people, the reason that, that the judges um, said I won round two was based on damage. You know, the fact that I was staying busy when she was just holding me. I was trying to throw elbows. I had the guillotine attempt. I had the sweep and popped up and did some damage, you know, towards the end of the round. So I think it was the reason I won the round was just based on damage. And uh, that's all I can really say. You know, haven't watched the fight. Were you surprised by her game plan in the first round? No, I wasn't. Honestly, I, I, I expected that Liz is, Liz is capable of, of taking the fight anywhere. You know, like I said, she started this all at the same time. So I wasn't. And I, and I figured after the first round she was going to do the same thing in the second and try to do it in the third. So once I figured that out and actually went go go mode, I was like, all right, I'm, I'm going to turn this around and, and make it into, you know, make it into my fight. But next time it will be a faster start. Hello, Dana. Uh, Hello. Given Verdum's uh, strong performance tonight, you know, a lot of people, when you originally tried to sell the fight for Kane and Verdum, a lot of people were like, he's a viable contender because he's dangerous on the ground. Kane takes people down and bashes them, but maybe it won't be so easy with Verdum. So maybe he uses defensive wrestling to keep it standing against Verdum. But now, given tonight's performance, Verdum looked great standing up. Yep. Maybe it makes it even easier for you to sell that Verdum's very dangerous opponent for Kane. You yeah, agree? He is a dangerous. And, I, and again, I don't think we saw... All of Verdum's tools tonight. I think he, you know, he had uh, he had him hurt in the first round, and and you know now I, he might have a broken rib. It totally explains why he would gas out halfway through the first round. I mean, it's uh, it's a testament to how tough that guy is it, it, to try to fight five rounds with a broken rib. Um, but it, that totally makes sense. I think that Verdum played it safe tonight to guarantee that uh, that that title shot, and who knows what can happen when he fights Kane? Because Kane's going to come right after him, 100 percent. Um, the way that Travis would have tonight. And I'll tell you this, too. Any questions about Verdum's chin uh, probably go away after that big shot he took in the first round. He got hit with a big right hand, and uh, I thought I thought he was done. I thought the fight was about to be over, and he came back and, and fought great. Uh, over here, Dana. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'll be speaking English this time. Thank you. Please. <laughs> please do. Uh, actually, uh, uh, big congratulations to all the South Florida fighters. And um, uh, did you guys feel the hometown energy getting into the arena? There was a, a big cheer when you guys coming on. Uh, any difference between this fight and, and your other UFC fights? Yeah, it was great. Uh, you know, especially for me, two years without a fight, you know, and hearing this paper cheer, it was, it was pretty special. I definitely felt the difference. Um, I loved it, you know. I got a, a lot of fans that drove from Miami and a lot of family members, so I could feel the, the energy in the arena as soon as I stepped out there. Go ahead. For uh, Habib, please. Uh, obviously, this was a dominating victory against a very tough opponent, but the crowd wasn't always necessarily approving of it. I'm curious how, how he thought his performance was tonight. А что ты можешь сказать про свое выступление сегодня? Ты очень хорошо провел бой, доминировал его, но публика может не совсем была согласна с этим. Как ты опишешь свое? Ну, соперник был на пятом месте в рейтинге UFC, и я думаю, что я провел очень хороший бой. Я доволен своим боем, и вообще вся десятка легкого веса им тяжело будет со мной, если они не научатся бороться. Well, I think, you know, the, uh, I had a very tough opponent. He's ranked number five. I think I did pretty well tonight, and I think all of top ten uh, really need to learn le wrestling if they want to compete with me. And a lot of people thought that um, he should have been on the main card on Fox tonight. Did he feel at all disrespected that he was on the prelims, and what does he feel like he deserves next? Uh, what kind of bullshit now? question is that? <laughs> <laughs> what are you, the new Ariel Hawani or something here? I'm just a translator. 
My question is for uh, he was Dane. the main event. He was the main event of the, of, of on Fox Sports One. Yeah, sure. Let him answer the question. Uh, Habib, do you think that you should be on the main card today? Как бы ты считаешь, что это было, может, неуважительно, то, что тебя не было там? Нет, честно говоря, я так не считаю. Ну, может быть, в Менкарде должен быть, но мне без разницы было, где драться, в ринге, в октагоне или там в зале. Я готовился против него, и если даже это было бы не в Менкарде или в Менкарде, по-любому сетка закрывается, и мне без разницы было. Honestly, it really didn't matter to me, uh, whether it was, you know, main car, cage, ring, whatever it is, it really didn't matter. And quickly, if I could, for you, Ella, this was, uh, I thought, the best, most complete performance of, of your career so far. Um, was there something different? Uh, how did you approach the fight? He thought that this fight was the most complete in what you used. Was there something special that you did, or preparation special that you did for this fight? Well, the work that we were doing, through all this time that we were working with my collective, has been coming out, and that's what happened. Hoy empezamos eh, la pelea se fue dando como veníamos planeando y empezaron eh, en las, eh, mis entrenadores me dijeron vamos a hacer un poco más de Miss Marshall entiende se sabe que lo que estábamos haciendo en las últimas peleas era un poco más de boxeo entonces vamos a hacer un poco más de Miss Marshall okay uh, we've been training all along to build up to what we wanted to do depending on the fight we were having and this fight was the first fight that we were not going to be doing just boxing but bring a little bit more of the mixed martial arts into the game and just quickly, if I could, for Fabricio as well. Obviously, congratulations on the win. Um, even people that thought you were going to win this fight, I don't think many people thought you were going to outstrike Travis Brown and do it that way. Did you see the fight playing out that way in your head, or is that just the way things ended up uh, happening in the cage? Muitas pessoas achavam, mesmo as pessoas que achavam que tu ia ganhar a luta, não acreditavam que tu ia ganhar dele do jeito que tu ganhou. Se isso foi uma coisa que tu planejou, isso aconteceu naturalmente. Yes, I, I'm just um, I improve my my training. I'm training a lot for this fight because I know this is the, the step for the title shot. I'm training uh, every day. I'm never stopping the training. I'm not, I'm not fighting for a long time. My last fight with uh, uh, Nogueira in Brazil. Yeah, I'm just keep going the training, keep going because I know my dream is the belt. Yeah, I'm just uh, training every day. When I say for the guys, Tuesday, Thursday, I train like a six, seven hours. Nobody believe myself, but I'm just showing the cage today. It's good English, yeah? Yeah, nice. I'm trying. Yeah, I was wondering that at the press conference. I mean, I've been in meetings with this guy for an hour. He speaks English, and then <laughs> he's got a translator on, on Thursday. <laughs> Everybody understand, but then I never understand me. When I have a meeting with him, they say yes, yeah, just say yes. <laughs> It done. I give me her, uh, money. He, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> My question is for uh, Fabricio. <clears throat> Over here, Where? Fabricio. Atrás. When we spoke in February, uh, you alluded to in one of the in Spanish too. In Spanish. In, oh, cuando Spanish. cuando te entrevisté en febrero, eh, tú dijiste que una de las cosas que tú te, que tú pensabas que tenías una eh, ventaja sobre Travis Brown era su falta de, de cardio, su falta de, de oxígeno, y tú pensabas que tú podías explotar eso, ¿no? Eh, ¿Eso era parte del game plan? Eh, o, 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 eh, ¿tú, ¿Tú tenías planeado llevarlo a los rounds eh, finales, o, o eso fue algo que ocurrió de esta manera? I'll say it in English. Um, and when we spoke in February, you, you alluded to uh, uh, Travis Brown's cardio being one of the things that you could exploit. I'm wondering if, if that was part of your game plan, if you actually uh, implemented that into your game plan, or if it just kind of happened that way. Sí, yo quiso, solo quisiera poder enseñar mi entrenamiento dentro del cage. Yo creo que lo he hecho muy bien. Yo creo que salió bien todo. Claro que yo quisiera someterle o noquearle, pero Travis Brown es durísimo, es difícil pelear con uno que es tan grande, ¿no? Y yo me he visto, me he visto más, un poquito más rápido. Y como tú has dicho, yo creo que él no tenía el cardiovascular, que yo sé que entrené muchísimo para esto. Como te dije, entrenaba de 8 hasta las 2 de la tarde con cobrinha. Entonces, eso me ayudó bastante, ¿no? Entonces, uh, yo creo que esa vez ha sido la, más, la, la vez que más entrené en mi vida. Porque como, dijo antes, como dije antes, yo sabía que ese era el pasaporte para mi pelea, de mi gran sueño, ¿no? Entonces, uh, yo creo que podría, sin submeter, uh, perdón, eh, submeter más, eso es, a él, pero yo creo que podría hacer como dos o tres rounds más. Estaba muy bien, estaba muy confiado, y uh, no sé si habéis visto, pero yo estaba aprovechando ese momento, y eso me gusta mucho. No, no, no estoy dentro del cage como una obligación, me encanta estar ahí.
Who the hell's going to translate that? Uh, yeah, I, I can't even keep up. I can't even try it. <laughs> All right, Maybe here's a try. So, um, yeah, it was part of my game plan to uh, obviously exploit his cardio uh, situation. Now, I knew going in that it was going to be tough to submit him or anything of the type because he was such a tough opponent and going in deeper rounds. And then I knew even if I was going to try to submit it, it would be a couple, two to three rounds to do it. Uh, so I decided, you know, that the, the cardio was going to be the way to beat him going through it. And then he said a lot of other stuff after that. <laughs> <laughs> he also said that it's hard, hard, it's hard to fight if I got a big guy like that. And uh, he knows that he had to train a lot of cardio for this fight. It was the time that he most trained on his career. And he was ready to fight more if he, was, he has to. Cool. One more for uh, Dana. That was so long they needed two translators. <laughs> Uh, one more if I can for uh, Dana and yep. Misha. Uh, with Gina Carano being such a hot topic of conversation, assuming that the UFC can reach a, an agreement with her, how uh, do you feel about a fight between her and, uh, and um, Cupcake? Well, we don't, we, we don't have a deal with her yet. You know, she's still under a strike force deal, which ends in June. And, uh, you know, I, I'm confident that we will, but we'll see what happens. But until we have a deal with her, we're not even thinking about anything. I'd like it. I'll take that fight all day long, for sure. I mean, I'll fight anybody, but I'd love to fight Gina. Fabricio, a couple questions for you. Um, it sounded like when you went up and, and you had your Fox interview that you were giving those guys a hard time for picking against you. Pareceu que quando foi agora na Fox, tu tava fazendo brincadeiras com o cara porque eles estavam escolhendo o Charles Brown em vez de ti. Yeah, just like, because I'm very happy for me win this fight, I just say, who who put money on Travis Brown? The guy is like a head. The how say the a coin is called vermelho. The guy red. The head like a head. It was both. Huh? The blood. The guys are like a very shy. Shy. Como é que é? Ficaram com vergonha, né? Traduz aí. Que ficaram com vergonha porque eu perguntei para eles e eles tinham apostado no Travis Brown. They got ashamed because I asked them and they they picked Travis before the fight. Did you ask him that because did you feel like a lot of people were picking Travis Brown in this fight? Yes, I saw I saw the uh, the guys uh, believe uh, what the guy uh, Travis Brown uh, win this fight, but I'm uh, just proof my stand up too because sometimes the guys say ah Verdun is just like a jiu jitsu guy. Yeah, I'm just uh, prove one more time. But maybe maybe I won the fight versus Roy Nelson. I prove again. This time again, I, I like that. Is that the biggest reason you think that people overlook you is because they think that you're, you're just a jiu-jitsu guy? Is that the main reason why, why people pick against you, you think? Maybe, yes, I, I, I don't know. I'm very tired today. <laughs> uh, one, one more question. Before you got here, Dana said that he felt that you had an opportunity to finish the fight, but you didn't go after it. You kind of played it safe in the last two rounds. Do you, would you agree with him? Were you playing it conservatively, or were you trying to finish in the entire time? opportunity? Antes de tu chegar aqui, o Dana falou que tu perdeu a oportunidade de, de nocautear ele, de acabar com a luta nos últimos dois rounds, mas tu estava fazendo um jogo inteligente. Foi isso que tu planejou fazer? Yes. Ou yes. Era que yeah. tu não quis? Yes, I'm, I'm just uh, I'm trying too much risk because I, I know him is very he very uh, heavy hands. Yeah, I, I feel in that. But I just uh, smart game because I know this fight is very important for me for my next step. I'm just smart. I know I have a lot of gas for this fight, but I am just did uh, like a, a smart fight, that's it. Uh, Dana, we have a knack for officiating here in Florida. Your thoughts on the judges and, and officials tonight? Judging was a little goofy early on, uh, you know, but no different than any other place we go. Eh, pregunta para Joel. Joel, eh, en uno de los rounds dijiste a, a Tavares que, que, se, que se moviera, que, que, que hiciera algo. You, you told him something in one of the rounds to pick things up. ¿Qué le dijiste? What did you tell him? <coughs> no, simplemente lo estaba motivando a que, que viniera hacia adelante, a, que, a pelear a dar lo que le habíamos prometido al público, ¿no? Que darle, darle lo, lo mejor de sí, darle lo mejor de nosotros. Lo estaba invitando a que viniera. I was only motivating him to come forward so we could fight to give the public what the public was asking for, a fight. Y segundo, ¿cómo te sentiste cuando viste las banderas cubanas en, en, en el público? How did you feel about the Cuban flags out there waving? Wow, lo mismo que puede sentir cualquier ser humano cuando ve su bandera. Uh, the same thing anybody can feel when they ha they see their their flag. Is it just me or is he the Cuban Godfather? <laughs> <laughs> uh, anybody else get that? Minha pergunta é pro Verdun. 
agora não é pequeno português. Verdun, é, queria saber daquele primeiro momento na luta, como é que foi aquele soco que você tomou e a inversão, que foi um movimento rápido que você teve que é, no primeiro round, logo no primeiro round, quando você foi atingido. E como já te perguntaram, né? a gente sabe que, principalmente lá no Brasil, teve muita, essa, muita gente falando que seu jogo era só o jiu-jitsu. Acho que isso te motivou hoje a mostrar... Porque você pouco usou até do seu jiu-jitsu. Isso te motivou a buscar uma luta mais em pé? So first, I would like to ask you about the moment on the first round when he was trying to punch you and you kind of got, got a hard time. And after, I would like to see if the the fact that people underestimate you, talking that you're just a jiu-jitsu fighter, motivates you more. É, o, o, eu nem me lembro da real que ele me deu um soco eu caí assim. Eu acho que foi na, no momento da luta e eu já tenho aquela meia guarda bem apurada assim. Eu tenho uma, eu tenho essa mania de raspar, né? De meia guarda, eu me sinto muito confiante para poder raspar. E, como tu falou, eu pude mostrar mais uma vez né, a parte de pé também e pude mostrar, acho que uma luta bem completa. Eu tentei finalizar ele na Kimura, só que ele saiu muito bem, acho que resbalou a minha mão ali, eu tentei segurar, mas não deu. Né? E eu acho que foi o momento da luta mesmo, acho que foi uma luta bem completa, né? a gente pude mostrar que nós dois somos completos. No uh, primeiro momento, eu me senti na half guard, que eu me sinto muito confortável, por causa da posição que eu treino muito. And I tried to submit him, and, and I had a Kimura moment, but he slipped. But I think that was better because we can prove that we're both a completer fighters, and I can show it again to the world that I'm ready and complete, and I can go for the title shot. Take one more question. This, I've Cerrone had to pee. He's knocking down Budweiser uh, as fast as he can over here and uh, couldn't I make it. Go ahead. Sorry, sir. First question is, uh, Misha, was the original plan to take down uh, Liz, or because you had the advantage, it seemed, seemed that you have an advantage standing up with her. I can't see. Where, where you? Say it again. Uh, was the you. original plan to take down Liz uh, because it seemed that she had a advantage standing up with her? No, the plan was not to, to necessarily take down Liz. You know, I've been working really, really hard on my striking, and uh, I've been training with Jimmy Gifford, um, and he's an amazing striking coach, and I wanted to show that I have been working on that. And, uh, you know, it was um, a little bit of a frustrating style because I think that Liz didn't want to engage in that. You know, for some reason, she wanted to take it to the ground. So I thought we were going to stand and bang a little bit, but um, then we got caught up on the ground a little bit there. And um, then I, once I realized, you know, that she was going to smother and just go for the take, then I was like, well, I can do that, you know, too. So <laughs> I figured it out in the third round, and um, I, w I wanted to stand and trade and, and show that off. But, you know, that's, that's where the fight went. So, no, it wasn't the game plan to go, and go out and take her down right away. Dana, uh, have you ever thought about Cerrone being a coach on the uh, Ultimate Fighter? Um, uh, yeah, I mean, he could be a co he'd have to get into that position to, you know, usually it's, it's guys who uh, hold titles or have ho held titles or, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, Cerrone's awesome. I, I love that kid. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, he could definitely be a coach on the Ultimate Fighter. He's, he's working his way up there. I mean, he's, he's uh, it, it probably... Uh, you know, in line for another big fight here soon that might put him in line for a title shot, <coughs> especially if he fights six times this year. Um, I, I want to thank, uh, I want to thank everybody here at the Amway. These guys have been fantastic. I want to thank all the fans here in, in Orlando. This was awesome, and I didn't expect it or see it coming. All the media, appreciate it. Shaq, Shaq Daddy, thanks for your house. Appreciate it. Um, just in time, it's over. Um, <laughs> So uh, really appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. Have a great night.